Welcome back. I'm Chef Allen. Today we're going to continue our cold soup session with two more soups for you, a tomato gazpacho, but a quick blender version, and a tomato watermelon. sort of history behind my my experience with gazpacho because I am such a tomato lover and this is my favorite time of year because we have incredible tomatoes and if you go to your CSA or your local farmers market you will find so many incredible varieties and the the heirloom varieties that are available are so much better than the commercial hybrid varieties you they don't even taste like the same vegetable anyway so a traditional gazpacho is actually made by hand, chopping very carefully all of the ingredients into just uniform pieces. And it's, it's a real art. It takes a long time and it's kind of a pain in the neck. And you have to peel the tomatoes because it's a very elegant soup. It's made in an elegant way. So that's how I like to do it. But I realize that not everybody has the patience or the time to do that. So that's why we're going to do a blender version of it. Um, when I grew up in Lexington, Massachusetts, I lived very near a farm called Wilson Farms and still exists today. Very nearby Wilson's was uh, the home of Russell and Marion Morash. And Russell Morash was the producer of a WGBH public radio, public radio and TV, but public TV program called the Victory Garden and Marion always did a segment at the end of each show uh, with a recipe and she would walk out in her garden and pick the vegetables and make her dish. It was just my favorite part of watching that show and she inspired me and I am making this kind of in her honor even though it's not the version she would like. So um, the blender version takes each element and does a quick blend in the blender, and then we're gonna put them in a bowl. We're gonna do each one individually. That allows us not to smush everything together and turn it into a total, you know, mushy mess. So we're gonna pulse each version of the vegetable, combine them in a bowl, and then finish it off with some other elements. So we're gonna fast forward through this. So. Bear with me. The parts of the soup are tomatoes is the primary element, and I have a beautiful selection of yellow and purple and red tomatoes. We have cucumbers, green peppers, onions, and then we'll stir in some other elements. So I'm gonna get started with my tomatoes. checking to see that I haven't over processed my tomatoes. Perfect. Cucumbers. These are a little trickier. See, the thing is, when you're doing it with a blender, you really don't have as much control, obviously, as if you cut everything up individually. But that's okay. It's a compromise we can live with. Okay, next we've got green peppers. And you could substitute other colored peppers if you don't like green peppers or if you don't have them. Back in the day, 
way, green peppers is the only kind you could find. You could also throw in a couple of hot peppers if you want here. or spicy onions, whatever you like here. Okay, so now we have all of our elements chopped up and more or less all in there. So here we go. I'm going to just mix those very nicely together. And then you can see I got a couple, couple big chunks, so we're going to get rid of those. And I'm going to add some tomato juice. The recipe calls for two to three cups, but use your judgment. I've got two cups here. I might not use all of it. We'll see how it looks. It's kind of a matter of what you like, you know, whether you like it soupier or thicker. And now I have a combination of some red wine vinegar, some Worcestershire sauce and garlic. Again, the garlic's gonna be raw, so just use your judgment how much you wanna put in there. It does make it a little spicy. And you're going to need to add some salt and pepper. We're going to put a little bit of smoked paprika in this one. And uh, I, always, I always love smoked paprika. It's sort of like the secret weapon, you know. And for a little heat, we'll add a little chipotle pepper. Take it easy if you're not a big hot person. And again, as I mentioned, you could give it the heat with um, fresh hot peppers too. So that's all there is to it. Gotta taste it. And we'll use our spoon that we use our spice with. Mm, that's amazingly sweet. My tomatoes were very, very sweet. So I'm gonna put, drizzle a little bit of olive oil in this I'm probably going to garnish my soup with a little olive oil and a bit of salt. I'm not going to put too much in here, but just a little bit less than a teaspoon. I'm going to let the flavors meld together and we'll see how it is when we come back. Hi, we're back again to make our second gazpacho. This one is a tomato and watermelon gazpacho. It's by my favorite chef, Yotem Ojolengi, who's a London chef with some fabulous restaurants and wonderful cookbooks. If you ever want a great vegetarian cookbook, look him up. Okay, so this is another blender soup. And this one, we're going to combine everything at once. So let's get going. We've got, again, some gorgeous tomatoes. I might not be able to fit all of this in here at one time, so I may do this in two batches, but gorgeous um, red and yellow and purple tomatoes. We've got a uh, beautiful farmer-grown watermelon and celery. This is interesting. This is farmer grown celery. It's very, very dark and has a very intense flavor compared to commercial celery. So I'm using a little bit less of the celery because I have uh, this wonderful farmer grown because the flavor is so intense. We're using stalks and leaves here. A little bit of onion. Some garlic, of course. And we have a little bit of tomato juice and basil leaves. So we're gonna blend all of that loveliness together. 
and let's, let's see how it works. That blended very quickly we want it pretty much like that. Yeah, that didn't take long at all, did it? Compared to the other one. <laughs> all right, let's give it a taste. Hmm, very interesting. It's sweet. It's actually not as sweet as the other one. It's hard to believe, but it's lovely. So we're going to correct our seasonings. We've got some red wine vinegar, a tablespoon, and I'm just gonna blitz that for a second. Then I'm gonna pour that in a bowl. Let's finish it off. We have our final product here, our blender tomato gazpacho and our tomato and watermelon gazpacho. I'm going to just garnish the uh, tomato gazpacho with a little bit of basil. I've chiffonade the basil. And I'm gonna put a little dollop of plain yogurt and a little drizzle of olive oil. Hard to see, but there you go. So I hope you enjoyed this and you'll have a few extra things in your repertoire to cook on a hot summer day. Don't forget to, to put these in the fridge, get them nice and chilled. The flavors will blend together and they'll taste fabulous. This is Chef Ellen saying, thank you for joining me. Come back again. This is Chef Ellen saying, Thank you for joining me. Why do I have such a problem with this? Is it still rolling? Yes. <laughs> I said it again. <laughs> what am I supposed to say? I, I'm failing at this.